Welcome. To we are going to discuss some of the properties of nonlinear spaces with some examples. Let X be a nonlinear space with norm satisfying the following conditions: norm x greater than or equal to zero, norm x equal to zero if and only if x equal to zero. Norm of alpha x equal to modulus of alpha into norm x for all alpha belongs to k, x belongs to x, where k is a scalar field. Here k equal to the set of all real numbers or the set of all complex numbers. And the third condition is the triangle inequality. Norm of x plus y less than or equal to norm x plus norm y for all x comma y belonging to x. So this is the definition of nonlinear space. So a nonlinear space has a vector space structure along with a metric structure which is induced by this norm. D of x comma y equal to norm of x minus y. So in the nonlinear space the scalar field is either R or C. In simple examples we have the scalar field as R itself. So first we will see some examples. Let capital X equal to R power n. Set of all n coordinates x1, x2 up to xn where each xi belong to R. We define a norm on R power n as follows. We call it as a one norm. One norm of x equal to modulus of x1 plus modulus of x2 plus up to modulus of xn. So summation of the modulus of each of the coordinates. Then we can see that R power n is a norm in a space with this one norm and it satisfies the conditions of a vector space with the usual addition and scalar multiplication and we can also check it satisfies the conditions of the nonlinear space and we can also define the norm in another way we call it as a two norm of x that is modulus of x1 square plus modulus of x2 square up to modulus of x1 square taking the square root. So this we call as a two norm of x. So R power n is also a nonlinear space with respect to this two norm. So we can see that the same vector space can be given different norms depending on the norm we want to define. The only thing is it has to satisfy the conditions of the norm. And uh, we can also extend this definition for any one less than or equal to p less than infinity where we can define the p norm of x equal to the p root of modulus of x1 to the power of p plus modulus of x2 to the power of p up to modulus of x1 to the power of p. That is summation i equal to 1 to n modulus of x i to the power of p taken at the pth root. Then we can see that r power n with the p norm is a nonlinear space. So we can see it satisfies the conditions of nonlinear space. It is easy to check where we have to use the Minkowski's inequality or Holder's inequality for proving the triangle inequality. So these are the different type of norms we can define on r power n. We know that R power n is a finite dimensional vector space uh, having a basis of n elements where the standard basis is given by e1 equal to 1 comma 0 comma 0, e2 equal to 0 comma 1 comma 0 and so on. And this R power n we can define so many norms where for any p 1 less than or equal to p less than infinity we can define the norm in this norm. So these norms are called p norms. p can be equal to 1 or equal to 2 or any real number between 1 and infinity. Now whether we can define norm for p equal to infinity. So if we see that limit p tends to infinity this p norm. There is a limit p tends to infinity summation i equal to 1 to n modulus of x to the power of p 1 by to the power of 1 by p. This limit goes to maximum of modulus of x1 comma modulus of x2 up to modulus of xn. So we define infinity norm of x as maximum modulus of xi where 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. 
and we can also check that r power is also non linear space with respect to this infinity norm so we can have so many norms defined on the space r power n and all these norms will be a, for each of these norms r power n will be a non linear space and every non linear space is also a metric space if you define d of x comma y equal to norm of x minus y then every non linear space will become a vector space so a norm induces a metric a norm generates a metric and with this metric if a non linear space is complete then we call that non linear space as a banach space so we can check that r power n with respect to p norm is a banach space so for that we are considering a cauchy sequence to prove a metric space as complete we take a cauchy sequence in the metric space so we take a cauchy sequence in r power n given by x superscriptium since each uh, element in r power n is defined with its coordinate x1 x2 up to x and we define the cauchy sequence by taking the superscript uh, x power m so if we have a cauchy sequence x power m which satisfies a uh, norm of xl minus xm less than epsilon for all l comma m greater than or equal to n that is modulus of x1 l minus x1 m plus modulus of x2 l minus x2 m up to modulus of x1 l minus x1 m less than epsilon and since each of these quantities is less than epsilon so this is the fact we are going to use here each of these quantities is less than epsilon and since r is complete each x a m can be treated as a sequence in r so fixing i i equal to 1 to n each x i to the power of m can be treated as a sequence in uh, r and since each of these quantities is less than epsilon we have x i to the power of m as a cauchy sequence and therefore it converges to a real number and we call the real number x i so x i to the power of m converges to x i then as it can be done for each i we have a element of r power n x1 x2 up to xn and then we can see that the sequence xm converges to x equal to x1 x2 up to xn so r power n with respect to p norm is a banach space similarly we can show that r power n with respect to infinity norm is also a banach space by the same techniques we can show because of the maximum of modulus of each quantity is less than epsilon then individual quantity is also less than epsilon so is the same technique we can show that r per with respect to infinity norm is also a banach space and also any two norms are equivalent in a finite dimensional non linear space that is they generate the same topology so any two norms uh, be equivalent on a finite dimensional non linear spaces so there is an, uh, nothing much to study about finite dimension non linear space because already we know that a finite dimension vector space is isomorphic to r power n from the vector space uh, theory we know that every finite dimension is isomorphic to r power n and also any two norms are equal in the finite dimension non linear space so there is nothing much to study in finite dimensional so we move to infinite dimensional banach spaces or non linear spaces